So Tesla is rolling out their new Model Y, their Juniper version of the vehicle, and this actually comes with a number of upgrades for efficiency and things, but most shockingly, and yet most not shockingly, they're putting radar back into the Tesla Model Y for the first time in years. It's not what you think, so let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I want to talk to you about the new 4D radar that Tesla is putting into their Model Ys, the new Juniper refresh, which is coming out in China first, and then of course in Europe and the United States, etc. very, very soon. So of course, famously several years ago, I think it was like 2021, geez, I'm losing track of time at this point. But anyway, Tesla had been using radar and also ultrasonic sensors around their vehicles to do things like parking lot detection and stuff like that. And then of course the radar was bounced off of vehicles in front to give a true distance to vehicles so that Teslas could use the radar in order to break if they saw a vehicle up in front of them. Famously, uh, Andre Carpathy, Elon Musk, and others at the time realized that they were having a lot of sensor fusion issues by using the ultrasonics, and we won't even deal with that because that hasn't been reintroduced, but they were having sensor fusion issues between the radar system, in other words, what it was feeding back to the, the car, to the computer, and the vision system. System. The two of them were often disagreeing, which was causing problems. And Elon in a meeting, I think it was in 2021, if I recall correctly, you know, kind of famously said, get rid of the crutch, stop using it and go and move on to only using vision system to using a vision only system, which Tesla has very famously done. A lot of people for many years said it was impossible. And now it looks like it's more than distinctly possible and that Tesla is going to be doing their first unsupervised rides in Austin in like June, July in that sort of range. Haven't seen that video yet definitely check it out up here. I'll put it at the end of the video as well. Anyway, let's talk about 4D radar. So they're putting radar back into the Model Y, but they're doing it in a very, very different way than they had in the past or that other vehicle manufacturers are doing it for. They're not putting the radar as an outward facing radar. In other words, it's not pointing out the front of the vehicle at vehicles in front of it or around it to see where the vehicles are, because basically Tesla has proved that vision only systems will work fine for driving. What they're doing is they're facing the 4D radar interior to the cabin of the camera to detect where the passengers are in case of an emergency so that they can more effectively deploy the airbags. And also apparently it can detect breathing and heart rate and stuff. So they can detect like if a child is left in the back seat or something on a hot day and you get that tragic situation where where the parent has left, they don't realize the child is still in the car. Well, the vehicle will be able to recognize that problem and be able to call 911 apparently if it needs to. So anyway, I'm gonna take this article from Drive Tesla Canada and we're going to look at the specific part. You can see there's design enhancements, blah, blah, blah. I hate the fact that they put the stock back in. I'm, I'm a big fan of getting rid of the stock entirely, but oh well, such is life. So real quick before we get to the radar, I just want to touch on the efficiency. The new efficiency officially is 2.8% more efficient, but actually might be closer to 5%. And it would give the long range model approximately 330 miles of, of you know, driving range. I think right now, geez, I'm, I, I never charged mine up to 100%, so I'm not exactly sure. I think it's about 310, 315, somewhere in that range. So anyway, it, it would be nice. It would add a little bit of extra range to it. And so now to the 4D radar, Tesla is taking cabin safety to the next level with the integration of a 4D radar radar imaging system embedded in the first row header. So of course that's the top of the vehicle, the header part of the car. A software update expected in Q3 will activate the system. So currently if you purchase this vehicle, whenever you receive it, they are not available yet, but when you get it, it will not be active yet. But once this is activated, it will enable dynamic airbag deployment based on passenger size and positioning. And apparently it works not just in the front seat. So you've got the two front passengers, but also for the back seat as well. And another source said it will detect that if a child is in the back seat, like a small person basically, and it will detect their heart rate and their breathing patterns and things like that. And it will be able to call 911 or take active steps in order to help that child if the breathing rate goes up or, you know, they, they're obviously in some form of distress. So that, that will be a very, you know, hopefully a very, very rare instance. It doesn't happen all that often, but every summer there's those horrible, tragic tales of, you know, somebody didn't get enough sleep. They went into work, they came out, they realized that they had taken their two-year-old to work with them instead of, uh, you know, their spouse taking them or something like that. Very, very tragic when it happens. It doesn't happen that often. But when, you know, if you can save a few kids lives because this radar system detects their distress and is able to either contract the owner, I would assume, you know, you'd get a phone call or something like that, or if necessary, calling 911 in order to help the child out.
And just to pop over on Reddit for a second, because I think this is a great comment. This is Melancotosmith or whatever. Anyway, I wish they'd use occupancy sensors to automatically toggle on off the use HOV line setting and navigation. That way FSD would know better when it can and can't use HOV. I think that's actually a, a good point. I mean, number one, just the, the heaviness of somebody sitting in a seat would be useful. You could know if there were two passengers and stuff. And that is something that would be really cool if Tesla could do. But then, of course, they could use the radar system to even enhance that so you could really tell like you could really image how many people are in the vehicle. So with all this being said, you may be like, what the heck is 4D radar, right? I think all of us are kind of familiar with the traditional radar thing where you see the World War II, where they've got that screen where it's going around and it goes boop, boop, right? And you see the little dot there and everything. Traditional, I guess that was considered to be 2D radar. 3D radar actually is able to give you more information than that. And then 4D radar is not like radar through time because it's always 4D, it's always over time, but it's another dimension that you get information about. So anyway, I'm going to link all of these things in the description, the Drive Tesla Canada. This is Aptiv, and then there is also another article as well. I will leave information about all of these, but I'm just gonna to touch on the important stuff so that you understand what 4D radar is and is not and why it would be very useful to use interior to the cabin of the car. Now, these articles all talk about ADAS systems, in other words, driving systems, where the radar is outward facing to look at other vehicles and stuff around it. Tesla is using this radar to be very, very clear internal to the car, not external to the car. But there's a reason why we need this 4D radar, and that is that it is a much more fine grain radar than traditional radar. Traditional radar is very kind of coarse grained. It, it just sees big pixels in the world. It doesn't see small ones. This 4D radar effectively is able to see much smaller pixels, which allows you to see things like humans and stuff, you know, smaller entities in a scene. Anyway, as Aptiv defines this, 4D imaging radar is high resolution, so that's important. Long range sensor technology, the long range doesn't matter since it's inside the cabin, that offers significant advantages over 3D radar, particularly when it comes to identifying the height of an object. This is critical for usage. This is one of the problems that radar has traditionally had in ADAS systems. This technology is important in the development of advanced driver assistance systems for some level two and three functions and is a key enable for level four and five, unless you're Tesla, in which case you don't think it's necessary at all. Okay, so here we get the difference here. Traditional radar systems are adept at scanning the roadway across the horizontal plane, right? So it does it this way, and identifying the three Ds of an object, distance, direction, and relative velocity. So those are the important parts. You need to know how fast it's coming in or moving away from you, etc. You need to know the distance and you need to go where it is. Newer 4D imaging radar systems add another dimension, vertical information. In other words, now they can tell how high things are up off the road. Very, very critical for doing ADAS type of work with these radar systems. And then continuing on, these devices get the quote imaging radar label due to the richness of the data they return. That is with both horizontal and vertical data, the radar can detect many different reflection points, which when mapped out begin to resemble an image. And so we're moving from something that's a that little blip on the, you know, the radar our screen from the World War II or whatever Cold War type of movie to an actual kind of image of what this thing might look like. And so you can see how if you turn this inward and look inside the car as opposed to outside the car, you can start to see the, you know, the outlines of a person. And beyond that, because it's radar, it can actually look through, it can see the heart beating, can see the lungs inflating and stuff. A little bit creepy, but you know, you can get that sort of extra information out of this radar because it's able to see at a wavelength that allows it to to kind of get under the skin and look at more information about the body. And then from vision systems, just continuing on with our definition here, in recent years, the concept of stacking radar beams, in other words, you get these horizontal scans, but you can stack them up, has been expanded upon to build what's called 4D imaging radars that also output velocity in addition to the data provided by standard 3D radars. These radars use multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO antenna arrays that measure time of flight between many antennae, I think it's antennae, not antennas. <laughs> I think that's correct. By using numerous antennae, the 4D imaging radar can gather enormous amounts of data to generate a precise three-dimensional point cloud model of a target object or environment. So no longer is it like a little dot and no longer is it kind of a two-dimensional thing. It's actually a three-dimensional object. 4D imaging radar enables simultaneous detection, mapping, and tracking of multiple moving targets. So again, if you have three or four people in the car in high definition, it is one of the key technologies being de developed to an 
enable higher levels of autonomy in self-driving cars. So again, these articles are all focused about ADAS use, about using the radar to look outside the vehicle. But what Tesla is doing is they're taking it and they're putting a unit inside the car to look inside the vehicle to see what is going on with the passengers. Do we have our seatbelts on? Well, of course they can detect that with the, with the click thing, but where are we sitting in the seat? How heavy is the person? How big is the person? If an accident happens, is it coming from the right-hand side or something? Is the kid in the back seat without their seatbelt, right? Did they take their seatbelt off? Do they weigh like 21 kilos? Because you can detect that through the weight on the seat, but then you add in the information from the radar that shows that they're turned halfway around backwards, looking out the back window at the time that a collision happens. And of course, a collision, while it seems almost instantaneous to us humans, it's very, very quick, happens over multiple milliseconds to, you know, more than one second for the actual accident to happen. That's like an infinite amount of time for a computer to sit there and analyze all of this data and go like, oh, I see what we need to do is inflate this airbag right at this moment as the child starts to move because they're not wearing a seatbelt, then inflate this one over here. Don't over aggressively inflate it, inflate it a little bit slower than the maximum rate for the front passengers, inflate this stuff over here, put the curtain in between the two passengers so they don't conk heads, right? So all of this stuff can happen during just a, a fractions of a second where humans are just going like, oh, geez, there's an accident about to happen. You know, they're sensing this accident is happening. That's about all we can do in that circumstance, whereas the computer has all of this time to determine what to do and then to fire off the airbags in a very distinctive sort of fashion in order to help the vehicle to avoid the worst injuries. So that's what they're using the radar for. And then secondarily, they can use it as an emergency detection system if a child is left in the car or something. And again, you can detect how big this thing is, right? If it's an adult, you pretty much figure that they can get out of the car if they want to. Uh, maybe even then, you know, maybe if a driver is driving and they have a heart attack and you can sense that the heart is beating arrhythmically and things like that, that the vehicle can take over and it can get you to the side of the road and call 911. So even for an adult, it could be extremely useful if you have some sort of health incident that happens while you're driving. But especially for a child, the car is parked, it gets left by the parent, the kid goes into some sort of stress, right? Their heart rate goes up, their, their breathing rate goes up, things like that. It can call the owner of the vehicle, then it can call 911. It can take steps to do that because, you know, more, much more than just vision, that radar system can really see what's going on inside the car, inside the bodies of the, the occupants of the vehicle. So this is all very, very cool. If we get these 3D point clouds of humans inside the car, is it a little bit creepy that it knows that much about you inside the car? Yeah, but then again, you know, hopefully you'll have an opt out or something like that where you're like, please don't send my information to Tesla. I think most of it's going to stay inside the car and it's only going to be used under extreme emergency situations where it's needed. So perhaps a little bit creepy on the surface, but I don't think it'll be creepy in the way it works. And of course, you'll never even know because it's inside the header of the vehicle. So you won't even know it's there. It'll just work. And again, just to be clear, this is only operating internally facing, not externally. So Tesla has not gone back on their word. They're not using radar in an external sense with the vehicle. They're not using it for ADAS. They're only using it inside the car, but they're using it in what I think is a really clever and very, very potentially life-saving sort of manner, which is, I have to say, pretty darn awesome. All right, folks, that's what I got for you today. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a video about Apple. Yes, Apple and autonomous driving. There's a paper that was just released that's pretty mind-blowing. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps out, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.